Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session, uh, presentation of joint statement of urban challenges by university students in Yokohama and abroad. Yeah, please enjoy your coffee and snacks. And in this session, we have students from Yokohama City University who will be sharing this research activities conducted in Thailand. Following the, uh, their presentation, we will have a comments from Japan International Interna Cooperation Agency, JICA res representatives. We hope that through this session, we can all share valuable information about urban development challenges in Thai cities. Without further ado, I will hand over to Professor Kitahara from Yokohama City University to kickstart this session. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for attending our session. My name is Marina Kitahara, an assistant professor of Global Cooperation Institute for Sustainable Cities at Yokohama City University. Today, I'm going to be the moderator in this session. So first of all, I'd like to introduce the director of GCI, Professor Onishi. Yeah, he will be joining us via online. So please welcome Professor Onishi. Thank you very much. Can you uh, see my slide now? Or, and also, can you hear my voice? Yes. OK, thank you very much. So anyway, good morning, everyone. I'm Aki Onishi, uh, Director of the Global Cooperation Issues for the Sustainable Cities, GCI at the Yokohama City University, YCU, and a professor at the School of the Data Science. So first, allow me to briefly introduce our university, Yokohama City University. YCU is a public institution of the higher education uh, and has about 5,200 students and more than 770 faculty in its five campuses throughout Yokohama. Uh, YCU's mission is to fulfill its role and responsibility of the education, research, and medical cares, as well as being a part of the urban social infrastructure of a knowledge-based society in the international city of Yokohama. We aspire to be an institution that contributes to the development of a sustainable society and in which local residents can take pride. We are dedicated to nurturing the globally-minded young talent uh, who will meet the needs of our rapidly changing world. And uh, within the YCU is an organization called the Global Cooperation Institute for the Sustainable Cities. I already mentioned that, GCI. The GCI was founded in 2011 for the three purposes. Uh, first, uh, promoting the activity of the International Academic Consortium for the Sustainable Cities. We call the IECSC as its administrative in, uh, headquarters. Uh, I will uh, briefly explain what is the IECSC after this. The second uh, purpose of the GCI is to enhance the cooperation amongst uh, universities as well as the city to city collaboration. And thirdly, uh, contributing to making um, students competitive with the leadership roles in the international arena. Um, so the GCI consists of the three uh, core units, the environmental unit, the urban planning unit, and the public health unit. Its main area of the activity includes research, education, and publications such as hosting an international symposium and workshops, implementing the Sustainable Urban Development Program, SUDP, this is an education program, uh, arranging the opportunities for the student exchange and publishing the various kinds of the reports and materials. So the Yokohama City University spearheaded the establishment of the International Academic Consortium of the Sustainable Cities, IECSG, with an aim to provide academic support in addressing the urban issues. The IECSG promotes the cooperation amongst universities located mainly in Asian cities and assists individual municipalities in propelling city to city cooperation. The consortium also collaborates with the organization, including the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, and the Institute for the Global Environmental Strategy, IGES, to work on various urban issues in the field of the environment, urban planning, and public health. 
So in order to contribute to the development of the global human uh, resources who can successfully work overseas, the GCI developed the global education program in collaboration with the IESGSC network and uh, promotes interaction with and between the students and researchers in working towards solving the urban issues. The GCI conducted three flagship programs. The first, uh, as I already mentioned, the SUDP Sustainable Urban Development Program is a course launched in the YCU in 2012. It strives to identify how the environment-friendly urban planning should be for sustainable urban development. Our main theme is how to maintain the balance between the economic activity and the environmental interest. The SUDP is hosted by the IESGSC member university every year. The second, uh, the Yokohama Urban Solution Studies, uh, we call uh, Youth or YUSS. It's a program for inbound graduate students and young researchers. It started in 2016 in collaboration with the city of Yokohama. Graduate students and young researchers from the IESGC member university and overseas partner institution with a clear research topic who wish to study the urban policy of the city of Yokohama participate in about a week program held here in Yokohama. And in addition to attending lectures, students have the opportunity to go on a field trip to public and private sector facilities in and around uh, Yokohama city. Uh, students have to complete a uh, uh, youth program aim to include their learning outcome in their dissertation in their home institution, university. Furthermore, they are expected to use what they learned from a uh, youth program in their lectures as a faculty of their home university in the future. So, that really about uh, the overseas field work. I'd like to ask Professor Nakanis to introduce it after my remarks. So, thank you very much for uh, your interest on in participating uh, in this session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Onishi. Next, I'd like to introduce Professor Masahiko Nakanishi. He will give us a brief explanation about International Urban Planning Workshop conducted by GCI this summer. So please welcome Professor Nakanishi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Masahiko Nakanishi from uh, Yokohama State University. And I'm leader of uh, our planning unit of GCI. And uh, before the student part uh, presentations, I'd like to give an overview of the International Urban Planning Workshop, IUPW. Hmm? Uh, and as Professor Onishi explained earlier, uh, Yokohama City University uh, constitutes an academic consortium, ISCSC. Uh, with uh, universities in Southeast Asia. Uh, as part of the ISCS activities, uh, we conduct uh, student exchange-based uh, educational programs, and IPW is one of them. Uh, IPW is a program by GCI's uh, Urban Planning Unit. Uh, <clears throat> students are specializing in urban planning, architecture, and landscape design uh, participate in this program and form groups to develop proposals uh, based on the field surveys. <clears throat> uh, this year, IPW was uh, held in uh, parallel with the uh, Sustainable Urban Development Program, SUDP. Uh, 50 students from four countries uh, participated in IPW, and 41 students from six countries uh, participated in SUDP, uh, making it a large program uh, with a total of 91 participants. And uh, the student uh, and faculty uh, traveled to Tamasat University in Thailand, this year's host university, uh, one week before the ISCSC conference. Uh, in the days leading up to the conference, uh, student received lectures on urban issues in Thailand, uh, made site visit, uh, held discussions, and developed uh, proposals for improving urban issues. Uh, and it is on this occasion that uh, we are pleased to present some of the results of the IS, uh, IPW. 
uh, an IPW has been held uh, 12 times in the past. Uh, as you can see from this table, uh, we have uh, traveled to the ISCSC host countries and uh, conduct workshops. Uh, in the early years, we used the uh, combination of the host university and YCU, but uh, since 2016, other members' universities uh, have joined us, uh, making this a large uh, workshop with uh, dozens of participants each time. And this year, uh, Tamasat University is th in Thailand was a host university for the workshop. And a summary of this year's workshop is shown in this slide. Uh, first, uh, Tamasat University decided that the main theme of the ISGSC would be uh, peri-urbanization from Bangkok metropolitan to region. Uh, this is because uh, expansion of the metropolitan area in Thailand is uh, triggering rapid urbanization of um, the surrounding areas, which is uh, creating many urban challenges. Uh, in response to this, IUPW uh, took up uh, socio-economic inequality in housing as a separate theme. Uh, uh, particularly, the issue of people's housing for discussion and proposal development. Uh, the overall schedule is uh, shown on this slide. As you can see, uh, the student worked very hard, very hard during the short period on the workshop, and we were uh, able to produce 10 groups of uh, proposals. And uh, here are a few photos to show you. Uh, first, uh, here are some photos of lectures and uh, site visit. The venue was a district, district called uh, Ranjit, in the suburbs of the Bangkok metropolitan area. So uh, the student looked around and uh, learned about rapid urbanization and residential development, as well as illegal dense residential areas. The student then uh, spent three days of group work. Uh, despite the differences in language and culture, uh, the student actively communicated each other and tried to create proposals. Then, uh, internal presentations were made by all groups and uh, reviewed by the faculties. Then, uh, on the day of the ISCS conference, all groups made poster presentation and uh, three presentative groups made presentation. The student results were very well received by the ISGSC participating members. Uh, proposals are not uh, the only results. The student uh, gained many outcomes. Uh, the situation of the city in another country and communication skills, uh, not in their native language, and uh, friendship. I believe that the student efforts every year have been a very wonderful ex experience for them. Uh, thank you, uh, that is all uh, I have to say. Uh, we will now have presentation from four groups. Uh, I hope you all enjoy listening to them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Nakanishi. Now, let's move on to the student presentation. Today, we have four groups presenting for us about their results of IUPW. So first, please welcome Ai Yamaguchi from our first group. Hello, thank you for giving me this opportunity today. My name is Ai Yamaguchi from Yokohama City University. Our group theme is Healthy and Inclusive Living Environment in Lanshit. Team members are students from Thailand, Japan, Vietnam, and Indonesia. I will explain about background of Transit area. 
As you can see in the picture on the left, in the, in the past, branded area was the large field with a lot of biodiversity. And they used to have a good experience and activity with water before generate of town. We visited informal settlements and gated communities. We found that there are many problems about healthy, inclusive, inclusive, inclusive environment and equality of living. We focus on the site location. Uh, we visited, we focus on the site location that is called Protonam Charon Conlanshit, which is where informal settlement locate. Please look at the picture on the left. The canal was separated the site into two locates. They built their houses over the canal. The issues that have impact toward toward the side are water and waste management, poor hygiene, lack of green, green space, unsafe walkability, and the informal housing. All of the problems that listed can list the bigger problems, such as health and living of people, quality of living, and natural disaster. Our concept is to make a better quality life for people in the informal settlement along Ranchit Canal at Protonam Chalaronkon. This is a future image of this area. So we focus on five principles to think about each proposals. Disaster mitigation, flood water treatment, connect people in the community, environment management, sustainable architecture. Number one is Diamond Island reduced the high pressure of flood. Locating communities within ring roads that is made by mount or frame, like a picture on the left, risk of flood damage can be mitigated. Number two is water runoff help minimize the risk of mitigate extreme events. We want to propose that water runoff help minimize the risk of mitigate extreme events with, not, with nature, not concrete. Look at, this, look at this picture and you can see the slope that water can run off both sides and waterway collect rainwater to stretch uh, and treatment water. Number three is effective use of underground space to mitigate flood risk. This proposal is based on our JICA project. Usable land is limited, so we should use underground space effectively. Please look at this picture above. This picture shows that plastic rainwater strange structure, which is called PRSS for short, it can strain rainwater into the ground temporarily, so it can protect flood. It can protect houses from flood damage. Number four is strong protection by using hard embankment. Raising the banks of a river, it can hold more water and allows for flood water to be contained within the river. Number five is absorbing water by soft embankment. Setting the grass space, it works as a filter, so water quality will be improved. It also can soak up and store water to prevent fraud. Number six is water treatment to contribute reusable water. Building a wastewater treatment center and connect to all houses, it can make recycling water from wastewater that can be used for irrigation or restroom.
Number seven is recycling waste to provide more greenery. It is important to make a system that people can send their recycled garbage to exchange for money. Also, in storing more bin points in the area, people can throw rubbish into the bin easily and connect back to waste storing centers. Number eight is improving accessibility to facilities using regional connections. Installing better path, road, and transportation, people can access various facilities easily. Number nine is number nine is green urban block to creating comfortable urban area. By turning the entire area into a green district, like our picture on the left, green, public green space will, will be increased and interaction between people will, will be encouraged. Number 10 is increasing, increasing green space for healthy living. We want to focus on the health and well-being of people by having greens in urban area. People will come to public area more and stay close with nature. Green space can mitigate the effects of pollution and reduce urban heat island effects. Also, it can support food systems by having edible plants for everyone. Number 11 is reduce air pollution and urban heat island by gr creating, creating green corridor. This solution will have increased biodiversity, threaten and connect protect, protect area, and also promote non-polluting mobility. For example, using bicycle, scooter, or even working, this will be benefits on reducing air pollution and as well as noise pollution. Number 12 is propose public space to provide more secure community. Public space have three values, so, so social value, economic value, environment value. For example, it produces space for physical activities and increases more business opportunities. Also, it can secure more greens and reduce natural disasters. Number 13 is enhance economic opportunity for local by agricultural houses architecture. Having a farm beside a house and setting fishing area in the, in the community, like a picture on the left, people can get opportunities to gain money. Number 14 is traditional houses architecture keep vernacular landscape. It is important to remain traditional houses architecture of Thailand because of keeping vernacular landscape. Also, traditional house is more comfortable and stable for flood damage. Number 15 is adapted house for sustainable living. As you can see in the picture on the left, building the collective house that is strong for flood damage, people, can, people in informal settlement can live, live in long term. We found that there are many things considered about problems will have serious consequences for people in Lanship. However, there are also various solutions help to maintenance and effectiveness. There is a huge gap between the lower income and higher income people in Lancet, which we should think about how to balance up on the equality aspect. Equality not only needs to be fixed on the house on its own, but also urban design helps balance the equality of people. Lastly, by having both healthy and inclusive living environment in Lancet. Moreover, the quality of life will be more effective and healthier. Thank you for listening.
Thank you for your good presentation. So next, please welcome Yuzu Nagoto from our second group. Hello everyone. I'm my name is Yuzuma Goto from Yokohama City University. I'm glad to coming here today and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Today I'd like to talk about sustainable development at some area in Thailand. We made this presentation at Thomasat University as a project of IUPW in this summer. This is our, this is my group members from Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, and Japan. And this is a definition of social inequality. It means economic inequality is the unequal distribution of income and opportunity between different groups in society. And the main topic of this project was social and social economic inequality in housing. We went to three different types of housing as a field work. The slum was used as a target site for, for analysts. These are the three issues that need to be resolved. First, pollution, especially air, water, and soil pollution. Second, safety. The most of the house in this area is made from wood. So it has a risk for a big earthquake or other disasters. The third is landscape. It means lack of green spaces and it affects public safety. From this background, our concept is slum or coexisting canal community. This area faces turning point. It means exist as a slum in the future or be reborn as a community where people and the environment coexist. This is our 10 keywords. The first, sustainable and safety for long-term plan and waste management and the recycle for saving and self-sufficient community for cooperation and green spaces for public health and balance between local people and tourists, tourists for study and last circle of long lasting model. From next part, I will introduce 15 ideas to the Bon Slam area. The first is making hard embankment. Hard embankment will help improve safety when constructing structures along water areas. Hard embankment is one of the optimal solutions to the problems of rising water and flooding in this area. Number two is reconstruction houses. The concept of this idea is to construct, reconstruct slum to community. Number three is add quality LED street lights. The concept of this idea is for decrease high level of criminal and danger by adding more quality street light on the road that the community use it for transport. Number four is General Information Center. The environment around the slum is also a dangerous place to walk, especially at night. So the idea is adding more safety zone. The highlighting areas are the main general information center here for responsible of security officer 
and it will be an opportunity for local people to have a job. Number five is create more open space. The idea is to create a green open space on footpath to make it more safety for people to walk. Number six is natural air purifier. Grow plants that function as natural air purifiers. And number seven is sorting. The next two are ideas that use garbage as a resources. The sorting is composting organic waste for plants, includes leaves and fruit peels. By separating organic and inorganic garbage, which, which can then be processed into compost. Compost is a very helpful tool, can aid with soil structure and fertility, especially for agriculture. Next is recycling. Recycling in organic garbage can result in plant, plant pots, tissue boxes, shopping bags, souvenirs, or some home decoration, and that can be sold for a lot of money. Number nine is filter for stable water supply. Number 10 is increasing community awareness. Number 11 is model of canal side community. This is our main idea. And divide the canal into three parts, serving three different purposes. Three different purposes. The A part for selling food and beverages and B part, open space with wooden walking paths and a bridge connecting to each other. C part, for selling handmade souvenirs by the local people. To through this canal, tourists can enjoy eating, communicating, and shopping. And at the end of the canal, they can get souvenirs. Number 12 is green space for the Creation, recreation. A healthy community needs a healthy entertainment space. Number 13 is increase green spaces. Clean, clear, cleaning the triangle area to make a public park. This location is easy to attract as well as access. Serve as a prime for community connection in the area, as well as a place to visit the rest and the tourists. Grow plants that function as natural air purifier. Next is pedestrian, pedestrian space for communicating and learning. Tourists can walk and chat with locals, local people in this area. They can both learn more about the local culture and integrate, integrate into the community. This place would be a field of eco-study for ecological tourism in the future. The tourist, tourists can also learn from this model and replicate it widely in, the, in their countries. As such, it will re resonate positively with communi communities around the world. The last is a unique symbol to make a specific image of the area. The place that attracts tourists is also a place to keep, to keep them coming back. So by plastic iconic structures made from recycled plastic as photo spots, to regenerate from slum to tourist site is a big theme of this project. So these structures will be a symbol of this area. To make a sustainable development area, we need to think about balance between local and environment, local environment and the tourism. Tourism has a big power to re revitalization because it brings economic and communicative benefit. But development that only considers tourism, tourism promotion will not last. It is not sustainable. But if we consider both tourism and local environment that only, con 
local environment, it has potential to become sustainable areas. It may be a slum with a bad environment now, but if it becomes a successful example of community buildings, it could become a model case for the world. For the world. Even they live in bad environment or don't have enough money, local people living in the slum look happy and satisfied. I felt, I felt that there are things we can learn from the culture and people of slums. So, coexisting canal community is also, play, also a place for learning. That tourists learn from local people. Firstly, I'd like to share a circle of sustainable development we, we made. After the community is stable by first and second step, by safety and environment, it's time for economic development. And lastly, the people's knowledge in the community is also improved as a premise for the next development step. We hope our presentation will help to make the slum area more attractive, and it will also help for future urbanization. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for your great presentation. So next, please welcome Ayano Kadowaki from our South Group. Hello everyone, I'm glad to come in here today. My name is Ayano Kadowaki from YCU. The theme of our group is Sustainable Satellite City. This is my group members from Vietnam, Thailand, and Japan. I'll explain about situations about Thai slums. First of all, there is a high risk of flooding because the water level in the river is high, and there is a lot of trash thrown away on the street. It have a negative effect, effect on the aesthetic of the city. In addition, there is a problem that it's difficult to walk on rough roads, such as holes in the road. Also, buildings are all old and damaged, and it will, and it will be destroyed in the event of an earthquake or other disaster. And there is not enough green space and some houses don't have doors, so there's no privacy or security for residents. The canal is heavily polluted. Drainage is flowing directly under the house, and they are catching fish from there. And most of the local is low-income people. They have unstable jobs, such as street vendors, and low standards of education are also a problem. There is an upscale residential area near Slum, the area divided by a wall and gate. Some people feel it's discrimination in gated communities. Thailand has high temperatures throughout the year, and flooding often occur during the rainy season. Most of Thai people commute to work by car or a motorcycle, and traffic jams happen every day. It's difficult to decrease the slum directly, but we can solve this problem indirectly by creating sustainable satellite city. Object is create a city that are equal at social welfare, economic development, and protect the environment to attract people to come. This system keywords one well planned satellite cities with a long term perspective to reduction of social damage. Three, enhance job opportunity. Four, regional economic development. Five, elimination of infrastructure. Six, protect the environment. Seven, urban design suited to the characteristics of Thailand. Seven, limit the aging problems for future. 
Number one is operation of the city. Some people work for their living in satellite city, for their living in satellite city, so government can save the money budget on workforce. This money can be invested in the environment, public transport, well-being. Number two is about the satellite city. We create new satellite city that must be within 40 kilometers of Bangkok. La Clava meets these requirements. Also, La Clava is a city with a well-developed transportation network and has an international airport connected to Bangkok. The new satellite city is expected to have a population of 200,000. Number three is making buildings for some people. This is an apartment for them. It charges low rent. They won't have to worry about hygiene. Same hates for residential buildings, regardless of who lives in, to indicate equality in social level. Number four is making other facilities by some people. It can enhance their living standard. They don't need to go out of the city for work. Also, they feel proud of themselves and have a sense of respect to their work. After they build facilities like hospital, shopping mall, school, library, they can work at these facilities. Number five is about communication between city and slum people. Middlemen take the responsibility for connecting slum people and the employer. Slum people will be a part of the city. Number six is charging, changing the traffic light system. Turn the traffic lights facing each other at a four-way intersection green at the same time. Efficient signal implementation using AI. Number seven, uh, the, this satellite city has all the facilities they need to live well. As a satellite city, we expect that they go to Bangkok for work, so we'll make convenient public transport. But they don't have to leave the city for any other purpose. New jobs will also be created so that the economy will turn around and government will get more income by tax. The next idea is the introduction of renewable energy. Solar panels are installed on rooftops and carports. As solar power is particularly effective in Thailand with its long hours of sunshine, other activities will include car sharing of electric vehicles. Even low-income people can contribute sustainability because they use generated electricity. Number six, uh, number nine is pocket park. Um, it's necessary to devise ways to cool down because the climate of Thailand is so hot. So our pocket park will be created throughout the city. And with trees, fountains for drinking water and cool off. People also can relax with nature in there. Number 10 is big park. We'll make big park near Kana. In normal time, the park is a place for social interaction, but when flooding occurred, it becomes um, a flat plain. Number 11 is make en making entrance for building when flooding. We'll create an entrance to raise the living space for prepared to flooding, and its, and its height will made at least three meters, referring to previous floods in Thailand. Number 12 is for smooth and accurate evacuation. We will, we will construct evacuation facilities because we heard that there is no place where people can evacuate when disaster occurred in Thailand. People who is temporarily unable to live at their home can live there, and they can get necessities of, of life like food and, and sanitary goods. We won't only build it, but also conduct evacuation drills regularly to ensure smooth evacuation in the event of disaster. 
Number 13 it will make a hazard map that written estimation of the damage from disaster. It includes information about the emerging area, depths, and duration of flooding. This allows people to understand the risk of disaster and also to identify safe locations. In this satellite city, development will be phased over time. This will prevent the same generation from moving in all at once and turning the entire town into an, an amazing society in the future. We want to make elderly-friendly buildings. Elevators will be installed with universal design to make it easier for the elderly and people with disabilities to move around. In general, it's often installed during remodeling, but it requires a lot of labor and cost, so we'll install at the time of construction. As summary, by creating uh, as Summary, by creating sustainable satellite city, we can prevent the growth in number of the slums. Firstly, the city is almost built on their efforts, so government can save a lot of money on the workforce and get income by tax. This money can invest in the infra infrastructure to upgrade the living standard, social effects, environment instead. More jobs will attract more people come to the city, which can enhance the economic growth and also decline the poverty, inequality, and social problems in the city. However, some disadvantages can be considered such as environmental-related problems. Providing affordable and adequate building and public services that meet the needs and preferences of diverse groups of people, such as low-income low families, elderly people, immigrants, and people with disabilities, not only enhancing social inclusion and cohesion, but also solving these above negative sides. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your wonderful presentation. So next, please welcome Judy Shimono and Keita Suzuki from our fourth group. Hello everyone, we are group 10. I'm Julie and he's Keita. Our group will make a presentation about development around the train station for people to interact with each other. This is our group members. First, I will explain about backgrounds of our group presentation. Not only in Patumutani, but also in Thailand, the traffic jam is heavy because most people use their cars and motorbikes. It is, oh. it is one of the causes of the environmental issues. To solve those problems, we think that we can use TOD here. TOD means creation of the city designed to base on the public transportation so that the residents do not have to rely on automobiles. This time we focus on Ranji Station. Second, through our feed work, we felt that there are huge gaps between rich and poor people, such as gated community and informal settlement. Some people work as drivers or earn money by selling at shop streets, but still unemployment rate is high. Third is about climate in Patumutani. Through the year, the average temperature remains stable. However, in Patumutani, it is too hot to stay outside for a long period of time. Moreover, the flood is also one of the huge problems. Our group statement is building a platform of public transportation to make an inclusive city using the idea of TOD. Our group has five these principles. From now, we are going to show you our 15 ideas based on the, these principles. First, improve the convenience of the station's buildings for local people. Near Ranji Station, 
with the fences around the station, and it seems to be cut off from community there. It is better to take apart fences and make multiple entrances on the station. Also, making bridge for pedestrians, they can get to the other side without detouring. People can easily use the station. Redevelopment of the convenient station for public transportations and pedestrians. In Patumutani, buses cannot run smoothly because of the traffic jam and few car lanes. We think there is no merit to use buses. In addition, there are few maintained pavement. Most of them are rickety and broken. It to increase the utilization of public transportations, including local ones, such as buses and songtu, it is necessary to make bus stop signs easier to find. And making lanes for buses and songtu can increase efficiency. Also for the pedestrians, we should make pavement wider and flatter to walk. Communication space to bring people. So in our group, we will suggest two mainly ideas, making a market and a park to support our concept. To utilize the resource of Paris urban area, we would like to place market of the local product and parks close to the canals. Also, the presence of people naturally brings other people together, which makes the area vibrant. Next, enhance consumption for slum people. Supporting this idea, we think making market is the best way. So why market? Some people can sell product or food and people will conserve money. Now in Thailand, slum people already sell products or food, but the place where slum people sell them is very close, close and difficult to get into. Making open market, people can easily stop by the market, which is convenient. So that can be a chance to get business opportunity for slum people. So the next idea is market festival market festival to make vibrant area for locals. In Thailand, markets are the main places where festivals are held. And that brings not only economic benefits, but also social interactions between locals, which leads to the stronger community links. Furthermore, that would be an opportunity for people outside of the slum to get to know the market. Therefore, festival will be the trigger to make the area more vibrant. Next one is about the employment of some people. As we said in the slide about background, unemployment among some people is high. And we think one of the reasons for this is the lack of access to recruitment information. To solve these problems, it is effective to make recruitment balls where some people can find the jobs. We'd like to set this kind of recruitment board up the market. Because the market is the place where both employers and strong people can come together and use this board. In addition, exciting area for children is needed. To encourage more interactions between various people, it is significant to think about multiple generations. But in Pathantani, there are few playgrounds for kids. So we propose to make playgrounds in the park near the station so the children can easily gather to play. Next idea is making boardwalk for the locals. We'd like to set boardwalk along the canals so the interactions will be born when various residents come and go. In addition, boardwalk leads to maintain the health of local people by encouraging them to walk and move their bodies. Also, we can make the area more colorful to enhance its image by making the flower garden besides the boardwalk. This attracts the locals to stay longer and enjoy the area around the station. Moreover, uh, if the garden is maintained by the locals, it will be the place to deepen community links. But in Pathantani, uh, even if we make the places where interaction will happen, it's so hot and humid that you cannot stay outside for a long time. Therefore, we'd also like to place something that can cool the area, such as fountains and emission systems. This lowers the temperature of the body and enables people to enjoy outside. In addition to those cooling systems, we'd like to increase greens along the street. In Pathantani, it's hot and hard to walk outside because there are few green spaces, 
that make shades along the street along the road. Thus, it is demanded to plant trees along the street so pedestrians can walk comfortably. Furthermore, this is effective to protect this area from flooding because the fewer trees there are, the more the risk of flooding increases. As well as increasing the number of trees, we can lace the banks along the canals with soil to make the land higher than canals to reduce the risk of flooding. These measures will increase the resiliency of the station area, which will be the center of life for locals. And to enhance the sanitation in this area, we'd like to make public toilets and garbage bins along the station. Toilets are needed because unsanitary toilets have negative impacts on health issues. Also, garbage bins are required to clean the streets in the area. Considering the environmental issues, the bins which can separate the garbage are expected. And moreover, the area should be operated with sustainable energy for the future. In the future, because of some environmental problems like serious climate change, it will be required for every city to be environmentally friendly. Therefore, we suggest running this area on sustainable energy by setting solar panels like this. Also, we can place this kind of uh, hydroelectric power generator because this area has many canals. And as the last proposal, we suggest cooperation between public and the private sectors to realize those ideas efficiently and with the high quality, it is demanded for government to incorporate private sector skills and the demands of the citizen. So those three sectors need to be connected so they can discuss the regional plans together. And overall, to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor, it is significant to utilize the peri-urban train station as a driving force for the interactions between various people. In addition, based on the TOD concept, those ideas can enhance the co convenience of peri-urban areas to solve some transport pro problems like heavy traffic jumps. Uh, we hope this proposal can provide the more convenient and the more qualified life for the people in formal and informal settlements. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing presentation. That was our final presentation. So let's move on to the Q&A session. Okay, uh, thank you for sharing your valuable insights. We now invite comments and questions from uh, our JICA representative regarding student presentation. Uh, prof professors and students, please make your way to the stage, please. Now, let's introduce the JICA representatives who will provide comments. Mr. Akiba, Associate Expert Team 2, Urban and Regional Re Development Group, Infrastructure Management Department, JICA. And Mr. Mizukami, Assistant Director Team 2, Urban and Regional Di Development Group, Infrastructure Management Department, JICA. And Mr. Abe, a senior Deputy Director, Team 2, Urban and Regional Development Group, Infrastructure Management Department, JICA. So, first, we'll hear comments from Mr. Akiba regarding the first presentation. Mr. Akiba, please take the stage.
Uh, thank you for making the remarkable urban planning project. Also, thank you for giving me the opportunity to give you the comment. Uh, firstly, uh, it was good perspective to use the word healthy for the presentation. The development of urban planning was started from thinking public health at the time of industrial revolution in United Kingdom. And now the people have a strong interest in public health uh, because of COVID-19 pandemic. Especially, I feel that people in countries which don't have a well-developed medical system are particularly concerned about their health. So uh, I thought that was a good point to think about healthy. So uh, let me ask one question about this healthy. The word health is included in the title, but uh, it was a little bit difficult to understand about the proposal about healthy. So let me confirm which policy, which activity connects to healthy town in your presentation. In, in your proposal, I understand the healthy will be realized by increasing green space, maybe which is written on page number 10. Is my understanding correct? Yes, this question is about team number one. Uh, I'm sorry, my comment is about team number one. Yeah. Uh, we thought we th uh, we thought um, many proposals about healthy, uh, um, especially we focused on number eleven proposals uh, reduce air pollution and urban heat island by create creating green corridor. Uh, um, Making, uh, making, creating green corridor, uh, people can get many opportunities to work and um, also people, um, people use, use bicycle, scooter, or even working, so uh, they will, this will be benefits on reduced air pollution and as, as well as noise pollution. So um, it, we, we thought it is healthy living. Thank you so much. I, I, I understand not only increasing green space, but also other things are considered. Thank you so much. Uh, the WHO website also published a short article titled Urban Planning Essential for Public Health. This article states that cities can concentrate threats to health, such as inadequate sanitation and pollution, road traffic accidents, outbreaks of infectious diseases, and also unhealthy lifestyles. It seems that the article aimed to guide people to focus on human 
and environmental health. So maybe to think about healthy town, sanitation, pollution, transportation, and infection are also important aspects. This is the comment about healthy. Also, second good point of your proposal was to think about the connection with outside of this area. Uh, in the proposal, uh, water treatment, maybe number six, and regional connection, number eight, were mentioned. These activities foster the connection with outside of this area, and it's good point from the viewpoint of the slum areas development. As the example of slum improvement, the Orangi pilot project in Pakistan is well known. The purpose of this project is a community activity for the improvement of slum areas. In this project, sewer pipes are constructed and it connects the inside of the district with outside. This project was not closed only within the district, but is recognized by people outside the district. This point was highly evaluated. So I think it was a good point to think about connection with the outside of this district. In addition to that, let me comment about negative impact by the project. Uh, it would be good if the negative impacts of development were also considered. In the presentation, uh, you mentioned to make collective houses as a countermeasure against informal settlement. I think this is a good idea. However, there is a risk of destroying the community of people who lived by helping each other. Also, low-income people who have lived a self-sufficient lifestyle seems to be reluctant to move to apartment complexes. So before starting a new project, we needed to consider the negative impact. This is because even projects aimed at creating a better society can have unexpected negative effects. This applies not only to JICA, but also to private companies. So it's good if, you, if we consider about the risk of development. Okay. Anyway, your presentation was truly impressive. It was good for my understanding and learning about uh, urban development. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Akiba. And next, Mr. Mizukami will provide comments on the uh, second and the third presentation. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Takahiro Mizukami, uh, um, Assistant Director of JICA Headquarters. Uh, before coming back to Tokyo, uh, I was a um, resident representative of JICA Thailand office in Bangkok from the middle of 2018 to the beginning of uh, 2022. Uh, again, uh, so it's my honor uh, to have such opportunity uh, for listening to your co uh, presentation and uh, the making comments and uh, Q&A session uh, with you. Uh, I am so surprised and uh, so interested in your uh, suggestion uh, with unique ideas and uh, integrated plans uh, for development uh, environment and situation in the slum area in Thailand. Uh, I have visited many uh, slum areas uh, in Thailand, uh, for example, the uh, Krontoi area and the uh, Riverside and so many uh, canal areas like that. So I uh, reminded 
uh, the situation in the each slums. And so some of your uh, suggestions will be fit fitted to uh, each situation. And so it may be the uh, effective uh, way of uh, improving the, uh, the issues in the uh, difficult areas. Uh, let me make some comments for uh, the group three first. Uh, so uh, the, in the presentation in group three, uh, so there are some uh, suggestions for uh, environment improvement in the SRAM area, what, uh, the water side uh, SRAM areas. And not only that, uh, but also it includes uh, the uh, tourism promotion and uh, the crime prevention in that area. So uh, not only uh, the improvement, the uh, living uh, situation, but also uh, inviting uh, the outside people uh, from Thailand or other foreign uh, countries uh, like that. So uh, it's very unique. And so uh, there are some similar uh, challenges in the Crown Toy Slums by the uh, Shanti and uh, other uh, NPOs uh, in the, that slum area. So if you have chance, so please kindly visit. Uh, or so I guess that so you have the uh, opportunity to visit there uh, when you have visited in Thailand. Hmm. So uh, that is very good. So and your uh, suggestion is uh, very uh, uh, reflected uh, that the latest uh, trends of the uh, criminal uh, crime prevention. So in these days, uh, some uh, people uh, suggest that uh, the open uh, crime prevention is so better than the closed uh, crime prevention. So uh, developing the uh, tourism sector in uh, the slum area it will uh, be uh, so very useful to not only uh, for uh, promoting uh, tourism, but also uh, improving uh, the uh, crime situation uh, in that area. So that's very good. Uh, I remember that. So there are uh, some unique uh, challenges in the Adachi Ward in Tokyo uh, metropolitan area and some the uh, modeling in Colombia. So there are some uh, unique challenges, such uh, not so uh, safe area, the SRAM, uh, SRAM or some kind of the uh, uh, the high uh, 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 difficult area uh, of uh, the crime situation uh, with the uh, point of view of uh, the tourism promotion. So please kindly check such uh, the, uh, challenges in that areas. So I have one question for the group three members. So if you have ideas, please kindly uh, answer to me. So uh, who uh, will be uh, the team member of this uh, plan? of development. So I remember, I guess that not only the SRAM people, uh, there are some the stakeholders or uh, organ related organizations like NPOs, the uh, university, or some the uh, private companies or like that. So uh, what is your idea of the uh, actors of your story? Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for your question. I think the um, maybe NPO or government should mm -hmm. be the main organizer mm -hmm. of this project. But mm -hmm. if it is possible, I want to um, I want to add a student, like a university student, mm -hmm. or more. Uh, High school student or more small children too, like a sangaku renke in Japan. Mm -hmm. yes. so. Okay, uh, you mean the academic and uh, uh, private companies' partnership? <laughs> yes, but it's very good. So, uh, so uh, generally speaking, in the uh, slum areas, so we have to. Uh, mention about the uh, security issue uh, for the old visitors. 
So uh, some NPOs have the, uh, their original tour in the slum area, like Krontoy. Yeah, but so we have to think uh, the, uh, not only the, uh, about tourists uh, from outside, but also we have to think the life in the uh, slum area, the citizens. So uh, to make the balances uh, of that, uh, the uh, life living areas and the, some kind of the possibility of tourism, so uh, we have to uh, consider about that balance. Thank you so much. And so uh, about group seven. Uh, so uh, so uh, on the other hand, so uh, group seven kindly suggested that the, uh, uh, some kind of a housing issue uh, in the, uh, for the uh, citizens in slum areas. So uh, your uh, suggestion is not only for all the housing issue, but also the kind of the employment uh, of the crime, uh, the uh, slum citizens uh, in uh, Thailand. So it's very unique and so very good point. So uh, for all sustainable uh, management of the uh, resident, uh, the residential areas in the slum areas, uh, it is very important. So, uh, by, uh, for by e inviting the slum citizens as a, a worker uh, of uh, the building, uh, building uh, works tasks, so it's uh, not related to their uh, on uh, their salaries, but also uh, their uh, responsibilities and knowledge of management their uh, housing. Uh, places uh, more than uh, ordering outside uh, only that so and uh, uh, about the uh, the viewpoint of uh, disaster management uh, it's also very good so as you know uh, the Japan is uh, prone to the national natural disasters like earthquakes typhoons and uh, some some uh, many uh, so disaster situations are founded in japan so uh, for uh, ref uh, reflecting uh, the lesson and learned and the systems uh, operating in japan uh, to all over the world it's one of the most uh, the requested uh, point and uh, duties uh, for the Japanese people uh, from all the people all over the world. So, uh, and I uh, have a question uh, to you, uh, Group Seven, and uh, that maybe I guess that. So, your suggestion uh, will cost uh, a lot of uh, monies. So uh, I, I, uh, I like your suggestion very much. But so uh, not only uh, su uh, suggesting your plan, uh, so, but also we have to uh, consider about the uh, financing and the monetizing of, uh, for be, uh, make a building and uh, the of management after uh, the build of the apartments or like that. So uh, you ha do you have any ideas about that? Mm. I hope the government uh, help my <laughs> but uh, Mm. I think uh, after built satellite city, uh, government can make money for budget. Uh, for uh, can get money, can get income by tax, uh, by developing city. So. Uh, if the government uh, mm, in a uh, long term perspective uh, the government will help the money for this city i hope mm. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry for making the difficult uh, question to you. So maybe so, uh, if your uh, suggestion story uh, will be realized in the future, so the many e politicians and the uh, public uh, officers have to consider about the same issue. So uh, I guess that so some of your uh, the members uh, will join to such project in the future, actually. So uh, please remember uh, the today's uh, presentation and uh, your ideas and so the difficulties uh, of the actual plans. So again, so thank you so much. So uh, it's very uh, important opportunity for me uh, today. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Mizukami. Lastly, Mr. Abe will share his comments on the final presentation. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm, I'm Masanori Abe from Drag Headwaters. Uh, the, actually, I'm in charge of the uh, uh, TOD project in uh, India and also the Bangladesh. And also, I'm in charge of the, uh, the, the technical, uh, just the training program uh, regarding the smart cities. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for your wonderful and attractive and also the innovative and visualized uh, presentation. So, and also the uh, comprehensive uh, the proposal. Thank you so much. Then I'm also surprised that the, uh, the you just the uh, finalized this document within 10 days. So I'm so surprised to hear that. So, so anyway, um, I have five comments uh, regarding the, the proposal of the group 10. Uh, the first one is just the, uh, uh, I think that is good to take up the uh, transportation problems. Uh, you said the uh, traffic congestion and also the slums and the climate issues uh, as a typical problem that most of the developing countries are facing at. And the second one is just the, uh, the when it comes to urban issues, the wide range of uh, stakeholders such as uh, uh, central and you know, local governments, you know, the private companies and citizens and international organizations such as ADB and World Bank and JICA and uh, are engaging. However, there's, uh, they're sometimes facing the lack of sharing knowledge and information uh, which each organization has. So uh, from this perspective, I think that the Building up, building the platform in a statement as an important uh, point of view. And the third one is um, the, uh, the concept uh, of the building a platform in public transportation to make an um, inclusive city. Uh, it includes park, market, train station, resident, and so on. So I think it will be much more easy for us to understand if uh, there's an explanation uh, why you picked up these elements as keyword to solve urban issues. And the fourth point, so regarding the principle, uh, the, you propose six elements, uh, which are TOD, an efficient urban structure and social uh, interaction, and the resident uh, against flood and public health and environmentally friendly. So I think it might be better if uh, to show us your vision at the beginning. So such, oh, so such as what kind of city are you aiming for? So before just showing these elements. And lastly, there are so many examples um, <clears throat> regarding public transit-oriented development. Uh, you, you, also, you already uh, said in the presentation as TOD in Japan. So, and we always uh, highlight the importance of not only uh, transportation connections uh, with uh, railway stations uh, for the convenience of transit, but also a land use plan 
around the stations. So in this regard, uh, we, it would be better if you show us the scale and uh, area of, of your proposal more in detail in order to make your plan more uh, realistic. So th these are my comments. Thank you so much. And anyway, thanks so much for your wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you. Uh, but if you any like uh, comments regarding my just the <laughs> comments, if you yeah, you can feel free to just the. Should I repeat again? <laughs> okay. But I think the question is about like uh, why we pick up the was about like TOD mm. and why we focus on the station, right? Is it is it correct? Uh, so yeah, my comment is just the, uh, the suggestion is just the, uh, uh, the, in your presentation that you just the, uh, said uh, building a platform that like a tron, uh, the tron train station, the market, the residence in the park. So, so the, uh, but at the uh, it suddenly comes up. So, so I would like to know the why, the to how you just the pick out these uh, elements as the key keyword. So that is my first question or suggestion. And okay. So first, we focus on the gaps between the people in slums and the people in like a formal luxurious like settlement and then and then we think we think about first like for how to how to improve the life of some people and then we guess they don't have enough job opportunity or business opportunity to get like enough money to improve their lives. And then maybe one of our Thai team members, he said like um, they try to, they have their own shops like selling who's and other things. And then they sometimes sell it uh, along the train rails. Mm -hmm. So we, we, as a Japanese, you know, in Japan, there are many stations and then there are many shops around the station. So we can connect those ideas. And then we think, like, <laughs> we like to think about um, the station will be the, the station can be the place for some people to, like, start their business. Oh, okay. Uh, so thank you very much. Yeah, it's like it's quite important to just consider in the current situation of the land use along the uh, the railway. So in this city, just the uh, if I'm right, that the uh, the MRT red lines is the currently uh, is on operation, I guess. So the the so thinking considering the 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 situation of the land use and on the uh, the just the understand the current situation, considering the current situation, and then the uh, sh just the making a proposal. It's quite important. So, and also as you said that the uh, how to just narrow the gap between the rich and poor in terms of the uh, so to to solve that problems that the uh, build, uh, the the land uh, to be used as the market. Yeah, is also the good. Uh, perspective to for the land use so um, the yeah so thank you very much and the second just my suggestion is just the uh, in some slides says that the uh, as a principle you pick up the six elements right so uh, the I'd like to know the how you just select this the six elements and also before you just the pick it up that the might better to just the uh, show us some kind of the vision so what what types of the city you are aiming for it's just the uh, for example like uh, the green city or like a compact compact city or something so 
such kind of the uh, the the vision uh, should be comes first, then to contribute to that cities, uh, the uh, you select this, these six elements, get that might make sense. So, so what what do you think? If you have any, uh, have yeah, well, any we we actually aimed for making compact city mm -hmm. around the station. So, and if, we, if you have this, such kind of some the discussion between the among the, your team member, you discuss some things. So about the what what kind of city you were just uh, swimming for. So making the best use of the uh, current situation for, yeah, in, in your team, just the, uh, mainly focusing on the TOD, right? So the using the, the benefit of the, the, the railway corridor that the, uh, how can I say, that the uh, maximized impact of the, the rail. So just the, uh, the uh, just how can I say, the, the invite market along the corridor, railway corridor, and also the, uh, so, and also the, you would like to try to tackle with the other, the several, just the, the difficulties, uh, like uh, the, the, some kind of the social, like a climate change or something, so prime, uh, climate issue or something. So do you have any, did you have such kind of the discussion? So what, what types of cities, you would like to just be aiming. If you're not, so uh, the, that kind of the uh, discussion, uh, if you have the much more, how can I say, the, how can I say, easily understand the people uh, to just the, oh, uh, to just understand your vision. So th this is just my comment. So, but anyway, uh, the, as a whole, so your just the uh, presentation is quite, visualized, as I said in, at the beginning, and also quite innovative. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abe. So we appreciate the invaluable feedback from our JICA representative. We are confident that this has been a meaningful opportunity for the student research activities. So, professors, do you have any comments or for all over the uh, session? Okay, once again, we extend our gratitude to everyone from Yokohama City University students and JICA. With that, we conclude this session. The Asia Smart City Conference has more sessions taking place, and we hope you can co continue to participate. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.